Today, I'm going to replace all of these with this. I'm Matt D'Amico, and welcome to another Edge of Your Seat episode of Retro Bits. Back in episode 10, I attempted to repair this 20 megabyte RLL drive by lubricating the read write head stepper motor. As you can hear, this drive has bigger problems, so I'm going to set it aside for the time being. In episode 3, I demonstrated how to write disk images to a floppy using the ADT Pro software. Up until now, I've been using this method and transferring software one disk at a time over the serial port. While this worked to get the system up and running, it's become a chore, and I'd like a more modern solution that both simplifies the disk situation and replaces the failed hard drive. Enter the booty. This little card is a mass storage device for Apple IIs that can support up to eight simultaneous devices, including floppy disk and hard drive images. The hardware was designed by David Mutimer with firmware by Marco Ramius. The booty is very reasonably priced at only 50 US dollars and installs in any slot equipped Apple II, including the 2 Plus, 2E, and 2GS. It's a block device emulator that can mount many common disk image formats, provided they're in ProDOS order. What it isn't, however, is a floppy drive emulator, and therefore does not support track sector order, DOS 3.3, custom disk image formats, or WAS files. In addition to emulating a block device, the booty can also utilize SmartPort on so equipped apples, such as the 2GS. SmartPort is an enhanced firmware API that extends drive capabilities beyond the original ProDOS block device driver. With SmartPort, maximum volume sizes are increased from 32 megabytes up to 8 gigabytes when using an HFS or ISO file system. Additionally, SmartPort allows for up to 8 devices per slot instead of just 2 in block device mode. That said, Booty still supports 8 devices on non-SmartPort systems by integrating a hack called Activate into the card's firmware. Another neat trick is that the booty can be used in conjunction with ADT Pro to mount a virtual drive from a host PC using a Super Serial card. At the time of filming this video, support for the 2GS onboard serial is still a work in progress. I installed this extension cable to provide easy access to the USB port. This particular model doesn't fit the existing DB9 port very well, but I don't want to cut up the case, so I'll be looking at a cleaner solution later on. For now, I'll have to live with functional but ugly. Now that the card is installed, I'm going to need some disk images to use with it. To start off with, I'll create a 32 megabyte GSOS system disk image, which is the largest possible ProDOS volume size. I'm using CIDR Press on a Windows PC to create and manipulate the image files. Next, I'll create a 1 gigabyte volume for software and data using the HFS file system. You can go as large as 8 gigs, but this is already more than I'll probably ever use.
While I could just download a hard drive image with GSOS installed already, I wanted to customize the installation for my particular machine. For this, I'll use the GS port emulator and mount up my newly created system image as well as the GSOS installation media. Once I've installed the operating system under emulation, I should be able to boot the disk image on real hardware. I've run through this install several times with floppy disks on the real hardware now, and it's a tedious affair that involves swapping disks at least 20 times. Installing an emulation not only saves all the disk clipping, but it also speeds up the process by running the virtual CPU at 8MHz, almost three times faster than the real system. Now that I have an operating system installed, I'll need some software. One site that's particularly useful for new owners is called What is the Apple II GS? Here, you can browse and download application software, games, educational programs, and more. In addition to individual downloads, the site makes hard disk images of GSOS available that you can use directly without having to install anything. My favorite feature, however, is that the site makes entire collections of software available as hard disk images grouped by type. Grab the ones you're interested in and you'll have a complete software library in an instant. One more fantastic software collection is Total Replay, hosted by the Internet Archive. It contains over 300 classic games for 8-bit Apple IIs, packaged into a bootable 32 megabyte disk image with a slick front-end UI. I'll demonstrate this later on, and I've included links to all of these resources in the description. I've already got my OS and data disks on a USB thumb drive, so now I'll copy over a few of these images to get things started. The first time you power on your booty, it'll go straight into the configuration utility. Here, you can assign images from the thumb drive into each of the eight slots. You can also change between block and smart port modes, enable write protect on a volume, and change the power on countdown timer. Here, I'll map total replay to unit one and reboot the machine. After the countdown timer expires, it'll boot into that unit by default. Hitting C during the timer brings the configuration screen back up. Hitting B will drop into the machine's basic interpreter. In this example, I'm mapping GSOS to Unit 1, Audio Utilities to Unit 2, and Total Replay to Unit 3. During the boot countdown, you can override the default boot drive by hitting the corresponding number key. Pressing any other key bypasses the countdown and boots from the default unit automatically. Now 
Now all that's left to do is try out some of the software in these collections. Still with me? Alright, let's take a look at Total Replay for a second. This collection is neatly packaged with a game browser that provides you with game art, screenshots, a help page for each game's controls, and a search feature. You can also just arrow through the titles until you find something you like.
So how does the booty stack up against other similar devices on the market? Well, for starters, it's the least expensive option currently available. That said, other devices have different sets of features and drawbacks, so you can pick the device that best suits your particular need. One option to consider is the Floppy MU. This device offers full drive emulation and features an OLED screen and buttons to navigate through your image files. The drawbacks are that it can only emulate a single drive at a time, and it costs more than twice the price of the booty. Another choice is the Reactive Micro Drive. This is an IDE controller that uses compact flash to emulate a hard disk. Its focus is mass storage, and as such, has no floppy drive support at all. This one also costs twice the price of the booty once the CF card and adapter are accounted for. And finally, there's the W Drive. This $74 device provides full 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk emulation and can work with copy protected images and formats like WAS. Like the Floppy MU, it only supports one image at a time and has a screen and buttons for selection. Like the Booty, it can also mount 32 megabyte images. There are other options too, like the CFFA 3000 which is no longer being produced. Also, a GoTech drive can be used when running the HXC firmware. As for the Booty, I'm super happy with how easy it was to set up and use. Combined with Total Replay and other hard disk images available online, my system now has a robust software library of the best 8-bit and 2GS specific software. Ten-year-old me's head would have exploded if this sort of stuff existed back in the 80s. So there we have it, the Booty Card, an affordable and convenient way to modernize your Apple II storage, provided you aren't looking for true floppy drive emulation. I hope you enjoyed this bit, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on RetroBit.